Welcome back. You're listening to another episode of The Todd Donald Show, a weekly podcast where artists and performers go to chat about nothing. Hosted by Canadian singer-songwriter Todd Donald. My guest on the show this week is singer-songwriter Paige Warner. How do you feel? Uh, I'm pretty excited. It all lined up. Um, I just released it last week from Friday. Last week, Friday, yeah. So uh, it's pretty exciting. It's nice to have actual music to give to people when I do a performance too, because I've done Summer Lights. I did it last year, Summer Lights as well. Um, Yeah, so I'm excited to have physical music people can actually buy rather than just covers and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it it worked out pretty well. I remember that feeling coming out of high school where... um, I couldn't have fathomed having a release, right, to give to people. Or right. the the conversation was always like, "I'm a musician." Oh yeah, yeah. Believe me, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when you when you when you when you put the the love of it into uh, a project that that man itself manifests itself in a, a tangible form, yeah, you have that thing to give to people. Yeah, totally. Did you have any anything else online before that? No, I did a lot of like YouTube covers um, and random stuff like that but I didn't actually record anything like quality that I could actually sell um through like iTunes and Spotify and everything um yeah so that was my first official thing it was a long time coming too like I started writing uh the first song on there in grade 11 so that's a good few years ago (laughs) I I would assume you're young enough for me to ask you how old you are yeah I'm 20 okay so this is a big introduction sort of for people to know that you're a writer. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And how does it, how does it feel having uh, those parts of yourself that you don't necessarily talk about all the time be, be uh, absorbed by people? Um, it's great. It's always a little bit nerve wracking uh, when anyone hears a song for the first time because it's a little piece of yourself that they're seeing, yeah. right? So you feel things. Yeah. What? This is weird. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you about. Yeah. Oh, and people love the question. Oh, who's that song about? You know. So right. got to keep things slightly secret, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but um, I mean, it's exciting because. I, I'm obviously like an avid music listener as well. Cause I wouldn't be in music if I didn't listen to it in the first place. Um, so I think just, um, from growing up and like experiencing things and getting helps through things by music, I think that's what makes me excited about people absorbing the music, as you said. Um, because I know that it helps people relate to things and it helps, helps people get yeah. through things and see like, Oh, other people feel this, right. Or other people uh, have said this too, or gone through this too. So I like that part of it. And also just to make people happy. I love to do that. I'm, I, I've been a people pleaser since I was like three. <laughs> so yeah, whenever people are happy to hear my music, I'm happy. So that sounds like the, the hallmark of a, any good performer. Like, <laughs> Don't be, I don't be like don't be in twenty years going like I'm sick of this shit like I can't yeah, I can't yeah. I hate people I don't oh, I don't know I love people <laughs> I think that'll happen <laughs> you always wanted too much more than I could give I, yeah it gets to people sometimes I guess <laughs> yeah but I mean it gets to the wrong people the yeah. people who never who whose hearts weren't in it to begin with I right think. that's, that's my fair theory. yeah I have a big wig next to me hypothetical and uh, <laughs> they they just want one word. Or, th- or a few words to describe what your music sounds like? Oof. Uh, we'll break it down after, but if you had to. Pick <laughs> one word. Yeah. Um, I want to say diverse, but it's not that diverse. But yeah, I think I would say, or, uh, hmm, hmm. Like Spanish bebop? No. Is that, is that one? <laughs> Austrian folk. Yeah, yeah. There's a little <laughs> of that mixed in my EP too, you know. Um, yeah, maybe just open. Like I, I like to be open as an artist to trying yeah. new genres and stuff. Like even my EP, it's hard for people to define what genre it is. And yeah. I like that. Like I like for it to be difficult because I don't think that music needs to have such strict boundaries and, and walls, in my opinion. It's, well, m- music itself like art any art is yeah. is an abstract thing I mean, totally yeah you can't really define it 
No, but business or like the the construct that humankind came up with uh, known as business, mm -hmm. they want these definitions to yeah. be like, like we are not the artistic kids. We're just the cool kids that have offices and we want <laughs> to figure out how to label everything so that we can right. better profit, I guess. Right. Yeah. Take that. <laughs> People who would otherwise have given me money for music. But uh, <laughs> what are you afraid of on your journey? Uh, as a musician, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, are you no spiders? I'm kidding. Yeah. No, as I mean, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a main thing for me is just I want to be happy with what I'm doing. Um, a main fear would be that stuff gets not hard because there's always going to be stuff that's hard, but I don't want um, being a musician to get so like intense or stressful to me that I forget about why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I see that happen a lot and it makes me really sad. Absolutely. Um, so I think, cause even since I was a kid, like people would ask me like, what do I want to be when I grow up? And I would just say, I just want to be happy because I do right. Like whatever. Yeah. Cause I think everyone's version of what makes them happy is different, right? So whatever makes me happy, I, I want to do that. I don't know what that is because yeah. I'm ever changing as all humans are. So, um, yeah. So I think my biggest fear is just that something or I'll get, I'll get in the wrong zone and lose some of that happiness, you know? Or forget how to be happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it can be a tricky thing because some people get into a place where they're like, what's the secret? Like, am yeah. I missing something? Like, I forgot how to turn the button on. Yeah, that. yeah, I know. It's bizarre. I don't think it's a easy thing to do. Like, mm -hmm. keep yourself happy or make yourself happy, right? Because shit happens, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, the question that I had to ask you, mm -hmm. you're, you are a, a female artist. Mm -hmm. And... There's all sorts of things that are just guaranteed to happen on behalf of uh, my counterparts <laughs> um, that are negative being in the public eye. Has it, has it made you not want to do music or has it made you stronger or just... Thankfully, I grew up in a family where all of... I can, I can confidently say all of the women in my immediate family and my grandmothers um, were very strong women. Um, and I totally appreciate that because I never ever once thought when I was a kid or growing up that because I was a woman, I couldn't do something. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think a lot of girls face that struggle, um, of feeling lesser than men just because that's how they've seen the world growing up. So they don't feel like they're as, um, as qualified. Right. Yeah. We, um, we spent a long, a very long few, uh, every century trying to program that in you guys so yeah we, I mean we, it's pretty ingrained in there right <laughs> yeah. um yeah so I think like a lot of women face that struggle and even um like just uh stereotypes of what gender should be in what job right like a mm -hmm. lot of producers are men but there actually are amazing women producers out there I looked into working with some unfortunately the distance was a little bit of a mm -hmm. struggle so I couldn't make it work um but I, yeah so I think that's another thing but personally um the main struggle for me with being a uh woman performer is uh just the safety side of it like for example if I'm going to a gig I try and always make sure there's someone I know there especially if it's somewhere I've never been because I've shown up to bars that are sketchy af like you don't want to be there yeah. because all of the men are just like checking you out trying to talk to you and you're like I'm just trying to do my <laughs> job here like please leave me alone right I, so I, I think I assume though as a, as a woman even the even like the mall in the middle of the day can be sketchy as oh as yeah F. oh yeah <laughs> I mean yeah <laughs> for you not for me I'm a guy yeah yeah I mean yeah you're always checking your back right but yeah. in those situations where just because you're the performer there's like a little bit of a I don't know, a glow about that that people yeah. like too, right? So Again, the pedestal. Yeah, yeah, totally. So people like, uh, well, guys specifically, I guess, in this situation often will like try and interrupt the performance to like talk to you or say kind of crude things. And yeah. Do you need help um, with that song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I wrote it, thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, please go away. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's the only thing I run into, but um, thankfully, like I have a very supportive um, group around me that usually someone can come with me if it's somewhere I haven't been, right. thankfully. So I think that's mainly what I've struggled with. Um, getting myself out there. Um, I think moving forward, something that a lot of female performers struggle with is the um, sexuality side of music because yeah. 
And this is maybe a little bit opposite of what some people would say. Some people would say a lot of women are pressured to be sexualized, which I think is totally true. But I think there's another side of it that um, if you do, like, for example, Undress, the second track on my album, it's a little bit sexual, right? It's steamy. Um, and I think that a lot of women are looked down because of that too, right? right. Because there is the side where you're you're pressured to sexualize your music and sexualize yourself as a performer, as a singer, whatever. But then there's the other side where if you do that, people look down on you like as like, oh, wow, why did she have to like use this topic or why did she have to like post right. that picture that shows her body? I'm like, well, it's my body, right? Yeah. Or it's my feelings for this song. Why can't I express that? So yeah, I think there's just like a side that women either are pressured to show or don't feel like they can if they want to. If the goal is Babylon, in terms of the, the, the dynamic and relationship of men and women. Uh, I chose the word Babylon, but you know what I mean? The promised land, like the place that we want to get. Yeah. Uh, if the, if the conversation, or just, just a metaphor for, you know, the worldwide conversation and what mm -hmm. we have to do to get there is going to be difficult and it has to be difficult. It was meant to be. I love talking about this stuff because uh, it makes me, uh, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm talking to myself like a three-year-old Woody Allen. Like, <laughs> what do you want? You white straight male savior <laughs> woke cod, you son of a bitch. Um, While well, we're shaking hands, because uh, you can't see, we're shaking hands. And uh, thanks, thanks for coming on the show, Paige. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem. Okay, we'll actually shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I didn't want to have to get up. I didn't know if we could reach. I don't know. Um, I'm a horrible host. And uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Revealed EP, here's Paige Warner performing the song From the Start. I wear your letter jacket on the first day Telling stories like we're in the sixth grade Drinking wine straight from the bottle You ask me to stay, I say I'll only stay a while Your eyes dance and smile With nerves lost so wild Can we just stay a while? Arms around me like a child you're smart, you know what you want You wanted me from the start Me from the start You're smart, you know what you want You wanted me from the start Me from the About empty drawers, unopened gifts for her. The giant bear you saved till your angel came. Your hands in my hair, tell me what you want and where. I'm already in your future from now until forever. You're smart. You Smart, you know what you want. You wanted me from the start, me from the start. You make me feel whole. You make me feel fear. Oh, hope that love can be real. Feel that it's a fantasy.
And we're back. Wasn't that a blast from the past? Mm-hmm. <laughs> At the time I chatted with you last, you had just recently put out your revealed EP. Yeah, I released it in May, so that was very recent at that time (laughs) and you know what that's still new like to now yeah it is it is pretty new it feels like a long time ago because a lot's happened since then but yeah it is pretty recent yeah uh has has anything crazy happened since uh no i've just been busy i had a lot of shows over the summer so i feel like shows feel like a year in themselves leading up to one show so (laughs) it makes it seem like a long time but that's pretty much it a lot of shows been writing yeah when we were chatting before, it, it kind of irked me that, because I'm not, I'm not as involved in the music scene as I used to be. And I, I, I've been aware, like, the whole, over the past decade and a half, of how, how busy the, the, the cover gigs are. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's, for, for me, I love live music more than, more than the DJ, if it's not going to be dance music, obviously. Um, that's always been booming. But there was a time that I was telling you about, back in the, the dark ages, because I'm... <laughs> I'm senile and, and white haired uh, that, that it was a thriving independent music uh, scene as well on top of that so you know indie musicians could be performing covers but also have a steady amount of times that their original music is being shared mm-hmm. and, and I've only heard your original music and I think it's amazing uh, thank you do you feel like there could be more exposure for um, the, the artist as opposed to just the, the act yeah, I think it's harder to get shows that are just showcasing you and you're not just background music for some other event going on. Um, I think that's the only difference. I mean, I do do my original stuff at shows that I do, but they'll be four hours long and I'll do five originals. So that's yeah. pretty uh, pretty mixed in. Um, you're never guaranteed to make any money unless people are buying your, your music at, at original shows. Oh, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. At original like, shows, yeah. Because you could book a space and a, and a lineup of friends to, to mm-hmm. play with you, but like the only money that you might make is either at the door, if mm-hmm. you're allowed to charge cover, yeah. or off CDs. Whereas if you're performing songs that aren't your own, you're guaranteed to make a, li- yeah. a living off of that. Sometimes. Yeah, well, usually because the venue would hire you, right? But Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. If it could be facilitated in another way by people having like house concerts or something like that, do you think, do you, think you would enjoy at least personally mm-hmm. would, would, would you enjoy having uh well not to inflate the ego but but like artistic validation yeah yeah i think so i think it's hard to find that demand though because there's so many other ways to find music that live music isn't as wanted anymore which is sad and i think people do enjoy it when they go out but it's not as appealing yeah like because there's so much there's so many other forms of entertainment now that when you want to do something in an evening, you don't need to just like I go out this, to see music. <laughs> you proved my point. The root, the internet killed everything. <laughs> I mean, it also helps musicians, but yes, it killed that side of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. How has that been going for, for the reveal DP especially? Was that the first major thing that you had online to, to, to introduce yourself as a calling card? Yeah, it was, it was my first original music online. Um, I had done YouTube covers, you know, the, classic you just do a song that's going well right now but um but yeah that was the first thing I had out I've found lately like in the past few months that I've had to focus more on social media because I've realized that's how you're gonna gain traction um because I've been doing live shows for like two or three years which doesn't actually seem that long when I say it like that but um but you don't really gain traction from that because it's all background music right and the odd person will come up and say hey like do you have music and I'll show them or I'll give them my car but um You don't really gain fans that way anymore. It's a, it's all a fluke. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think that's the bottom of it. Uh, no, like I, th- I think people who know what they're doing and, and, and take the time like you do to, to finesse every angle from, from learning new cover songs, from, mm-hmm. from continually writing your own songs and just punching it all of the walls. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also giving yourself time to rest. and uh, I'll, That's a hard one. <laughs> uh, maybe one, because like we're almost caught up, so I can get into like the fun art- artistic stuff talk. But do you feel like with creating an online presence that, it, um, that you're creating a persona that you have to live up to 
whenever you interact with people or do you mm. feel like you can be completely yourself at all times still? Uh, I mean, I think when, especially on social media, not necessarily just releasing music, I think on social media, people always put out the best points in their life right. in general. Um, but I also think that shows are the best points in your life too. So I think yeah. that anytime that you're being your artist self, I'm doing quotes for you guys who can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think anytime you're being your artist self, um, it's kind of a different persona. However, I was right. trying to be true to myself, but right. I'm not going to be up on stage just looking grumpy and tired if at home if I was at home I'd be grumpy and tired right yeah. so there is a persona where like you do have to be chipper but also the best points in your life usually are happier so yeah yeah again I love the EP uh, can you tell me I, I am referring to notes I, I, I'm not gonna pretend I'm not uh, I, th and th there's some questions that have been really tickling me now that I can actually start with you and, and other bands and artists that come on mm -hmm. asking things that really intrigue me about being a musician mm -hmm. as well as observing musicians you know every every musician is also a music fan right mm -hmm. in your life when you've seen musicians uh whether it's since since you've called since you've acknowledged yourself as one and before do you think that people who are musicians have like an allure about them i would often say yes mm -hmm. but i don't think that that's necessarily true. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think I feel that way when I see musicians live. Um, like, I'll go back and watch videos that I've taken at concerts and just sit there and like, wow, this is so cool. That person's so cool. Yeah. But then there'll be like a young girl that comes up to me at a show. It's like, oh my gosh, you're so good. I wish I could be like, you want to be a musician, right? So I think it's just, there's always levels to it. Yeah, there is. And I think that people often look up to people that are... Mm, I don't want to say more successful because it's all different, but like in a place where you want to be. Yeah. But I think that's why in my mind I idolize them, I guess, is because they're in a place that I want to be. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's, I guess it's different from someone well, that's not a musician. It might be knowledge that makes or breaks the thing. Because if there's like vague, if there's like mystery, like your senses are being ignited because you're seeing them walk by mm -hmm. or you're seeing the musician perform. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's also mystery. So it's like that adds coolness. But like with anything, like if you get to know their, if you get to know them and then you find out they're complete dirt bag <laughs> or just, I don't know if they don't even like themselves, yeah. that takes away from, from things. But then yeah. sometimes you get to know music, other musicians and you find out they're, they're like you, or you get to find out they're even more interesting than you already thought. Yeah. But like, that's true. With that lack of knowledge, that mystique. Again. Kind of fill in what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So who are the great songwriters to Paige Warner? Who are the ones that, uh, who set you free? <sighs> when I would, before I started music or now? At any point. Set, mm. Setting you free, meaning like, I, I didn't know people could do that until this person. Um, okay. So when I started doing music, I listened to Eva Cassidy um, and I might've actually mentioned this in the interview we talked about last time. Cause she was like my first inspiration. Um, but something that, that set me free, I guess you can say from the genre walls was her because, and this isn't recent music. I feel like in the past year or so people have really been like pushing to not have super strict genres. Mm -hmm. Um, but she really did because she would do like a folk song and then go and do a full on blues song and then go and do a rock song and like, yeah. Even in one show, there would be live performances where she would put them back to back. And I'm like, how are you allowed to do that? But everyone loved her. Right. And she was so good. And she was just like, I think the thing was she just played what she wanted to play. And that's what I'm kind of trying to let myself grow into. Yeah. Because a lot of times, even when I'm writing music, I'll be in the middle of writing something and say, oh, no, but that won't really fit with the vibe that I feel like I want to go towards. And I'm like, but wait, if I want to write it, just write it. Yeah. Right? So. I guess that's the tough thing about the what the place that you're putting it out into if they're setting the rules yeah then that's not fair to you yeah well yeah i'm tr i'm just trying to yeah it's exactly like that i'm trying to keep myself from looking at the end product and just looking at what i want to create right now yeah um and i found i did this with my ep too like 
I love how it turned out, but even when I was writing that, I would tried to direct a lot of the songs in a certain way, whereas I could have just written it and then melded it together, right. which I did more than I, like I did meld it together in the end and my producer helped me with that, which is great. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, I think every artist deserves to make the thing that they want to make and put it out. Yeah. And then... You know, even though you're talking to Captain Exposition over Explaino over here, <laughs> the goal that I've been taught is that you don't want to have to explain anything to people between handing it to them and them hearing it. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I gave people like an hour debriefing yeah. on the things I wanted them to forgive me for yeah. before they even heard the song. All the disclaimers, right? <laughs> yeah. Someone said doubt kills dreams faster than failure. Mm-hmm. So... Maybe you should, and I don't know why I'm putting this in the interview, but like you should treat your songwriting process selfishly. Yeah. Well, that's exactly, I was actually just thinking about this yesterday. It's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about that. I think, yeah, I think it was yesterday um, when I was thinking about why is, is it sometimes so hard to write songs? And it's because of that same thing. I'm thinking about what everyone's going to want to hear. Right. Whereas it's, and I think it's hard once artists have already released something because then they're thinking about the whole process. Right. Um, yeah, I need to just think about what do I need to express onto this paper? What do I want the music to sound like? Because if you yeah. like the song in the end, someone else is going to like it. Yeah. Right? Because I'm a human. If I like it, there's going to be other humans like me that are going to like it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, yeah, I think that's exactly right. You have to write selfishly. Yeah. Even if you know the end product is going to be to other people, but in the <laughs> beginning, it's not. <laughs> I have lately really liked the songwriting of uh, B.B. Borelli, who I actually mentioned earlier because she was super depressing online, which is, you know, fine. Express yeah. what we need to express. Well, we're talking um, about craft now. So Yeah, yeah. Um, just because she writes uh, very real, I guess, um, and whether that comes across as a dark song or a happy song. Like, she wrote, um, <laughs> this, you know, bitch better have my money. Bitch better have my money. Rihanna I've, sings I've heard it. Of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Rihanna sings it. Anyway, she wrote that song, but a lot of her songs, because she writes for other people, a lot of her songs are very vulnerable, I guess. Right. Um, so in my mind, if you write a song that can bring someone into that moment, I feel like that's a good song. And I'm not super intense about like making the lyrics just profound or making the chord progression or yeah, musical can, parts like anything i don't think anything needs to be profound necessarily right. but if it's something that feels real and that people can connect to that to me feels like a real really good songwriter yeah yeah i mean i need it's uh dimensional you have to choose the dimensions that your songwriting mm -hmm. exists in and again in that in that playground as a creative person you can you can have fun with it. You can have you can have a song about something really personal and have it be a two dimensional song. Mm -hmm. By two dimensions, I mean someone could just chill to it and not think about it too much. Yeah, it's 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 almost like the soundtrack to their drive. Yeah, and but if you want a song to be three dimensional, getting them emotionally, you you get to decide that. It's true. Yeah. You can make someone feel something though about a glass bottle, and not feel something about a breakup. Mm -hmm depending mm -hmm. on how you write it. Yeah. So, but that's important that you mention that too, because some people are so serious that they think that every song has to be a gut wrenching. Yeah. Well, and not even gut wrenching, like even just the musical parts of it. Like I try and keep myself from being a music snob, I guess, if that's a term we can use. I heard, I heard, I mean, the audience <laughs> is going to hear some major sevens and, and some add nines and in your chords. <laughs> and I think that's wonderful. Yeah, but, well, okay, so for example, in Worth It, right, those chords are crazy, and then yeah. from the start, that is the most simple chord progression. It's like a one, four, five, something. Yeah. It's like, do I heard do, wap, do, do. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I love both of those songs that I wrote equally, mm -hmm. and they both, and to me, even from the start is more of a deep song to me, even though the music and the lyrics aren't profound or crazy, amazing, technical, anything, right? Me, me, yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't have to justify that it's not. Yeah, well, complicated. My mom used to always say to me when I started out, "You're not doing music for the musicians; you're doing it for the audience." Right. Right. So when I started out, I grew up around a lot of musicians. I grew up in a church. There was like so many music people there, as there are often in churches. And um, my mom would always say, "Don't worry about them. You're playing for the audience. People don't care what 
nine or seven let's use that an example what nine or seven is there if they feel the song they feel it right yeah because i would always get caught up in like oh well i know that person knows music or like oh if i'm at a show and someone comes up to me hey he's a musician too instantly i start to get freaked out right i'm like oh my gosh they're gonna see through that i'm not that good <laughs> all this stuff but it really doesn't matter in the end because everyone is enjoying it yeah. yeah i want for you Paige, for people to to say that like you know Everybody might like this person, but I'm one of those people who is a huge Paige Warner fan, and I don't care. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not that people are saying like. It like, sounds bad, but I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't care what like ninety percent of the world thinks. Yeah. I like Paige. Warner. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, or no, I'm not kidding. I just didn't say that. Well. Yeah, no, I yeah. know what you mean. <laughs> Maybe that's the note that we could that we could wrap up on, but. <laughs> Both times, uh, had a great time chatting with you, and uh, I appreciate both your sincerity, but also your energy. Like, cause you're st- you're still committed. You're interested in this. You're not jaded or anything. Okay, so let me try that one more time. I want to have a nice. I don't need to be perfect. I don't need to be amazing. I just don't want it just to suck. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> I don't want to be perfect. I don't want to be amazing. I just don't want to suck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> life goals right <Yeah>. there <laughs> <sighs> okay well thanks for chatting I'm, I'm thrilled to once again be, uh, be having you perform for my podcast take it away this song is called Please Don't Look At Me it's from my EP um, Revealed and it's the last track
This next song is called Worth It. It's the opening track on that same EP. Um, and we're going to have a little fun with the drum machine on this one. listening to another episode of the Todd Donald Show, starring, produced, and edited by Todd Donald. The piano music in the rap is by J.P. Sunga, who you can find at jpsunga.com. The theme music is Mackie Alkino by William Chernoff. Find him at chernoff.band. And I'm Milo Axelrod, Todd's favorite bar none human voice. And I'm not bragging, he wrote this. If you'd like to hear more of my voice, check out my podcast, Describing a Rock, in which I describe some rocks. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Please support The Todd Donald Show by sharing it with anyone who might enjoy it. Follow and interact with at Todd Donald Show on Twitter and Instagram. And if you feel like going the extra mile on iTunes, please subscribe, rate, and review, preferably in its favor. Have a great day, friends. Thank you.